Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. If you're new to the channel, my name is Umbrus and I'm working as a solo programmer on a little roguelike game called Solo Rogue. And as I go through different iteration of the game, every week when I encounter new issues and new problems, I try to make a devlog out of it and I hope that at the same time my knowledge of this is going to be useful for you and your own game. So up until now my game was saving on demand. Basically I had a button and if you don't click the button the game doesn't save, which was really great for debugging and testing because I could always restart the game at the same point and test again and again the same thing. But as a player it makes way more sense if the game saves after every turn. Especially since my game is on mobile and in mobile you know you never know when your game is gonna get thrown in the background and then suddenly killed by the OS and you don't want the player to have to remember to save before answering a call or something. Of course, I already have a single point of entry to save my whole game, so it wasn't really difficult to just, at the end of every turn, call this method and then we're all done, right? Well, more or less, because when I started playtesting, as I was getting deeper and deeper, my game started running slower and slower, and by the late game I was getting crazy lag spike. And the reason for that is, of course, because every level I pass, my save game grows, and when it starts getting a certain size, then writing to the disk starts taking quite a bit of time. And, well, yeah, disk access is slow, really, really, really slow, and a 20 millisecond lag spike in the main thread for writing something to the disk is very noticeable. Like any engineering problems, there's always plenty of solutions, but the idea is, which one is the best? And uh, one of the first things that came to mind when I encountered this issue is that, well, since it's lagging when I write, maybe I shouldn't write every turn. Maybe I can write every 10 turns, or maybe I can write only every 5 minutes or something. But really, that's a really bad idea, because that only makes it so that every 5 minutes I'm gonna get the lag spike instead of every turn, but I'll still get a lag spike. And let me tell you something. As a gamer and a game developer, I can swear to you that it's easier to play a game at 15 FPS, constant, than having a game running at 60 FPS but having a lag spike every couple of seconds. Lag spikes are deadly to a game enjoyability, so you want to avoid them at all costs. My next idea was to try to binarize my save game, because you see right now my save game is just plain old JSON data written as text on the disk. But in my opinion, binarizing the data is useful for other stuff beside just reducing the size of your save file. For example, it can be useful to try to encrypt the data so that it's harder to cheat, or you might want to uh, binarize it in a format that will be faster to load for the computer so that you can reduce your load time. But it doesn't directly fix my issue of slow disk access because as I put update for my game and make more levels and increase the complexity and add more items and eventually even the binary file is going to grow in size and it will eventually be slow to read and write so it doesn't really fix my current problem but it's a good idea to keep it in mind for when I need the other fixes like reducing the load time or encrypting my data or stuff like that but for now, I don't think it's worth the time implementing it to fix an issue that's not gonna be exactly fixed by this. So the next thing I thought about was how about splitting my save file? Because my save file right now contains all the data for all the levels that the player has been through. So my current game has 12 levels, so potentially there's 12 levels of data in there. But when you're on level 5, for example, well, you're not modifying the data for all the other levels. So why not make each level its own separate save file? This would reduce very much the size of the save file, which would make the read and write much faster. And I like this idea because it could also be a way to improve the loading performance because instead of having to load all the level data in one big chunk, I could load only the level data I need. The reason I haven't done it really is because it would be a bit of a big chore to manage potentially like dozens of level files all separate and when you die I have to clean all of this and then when you're moving around between level I have to swap and store one level, load another level. 
it just seemed like a lot of work. And actually, in the end, I found a much better solution because I figured out why not just make the saving in a thread. This way, it doesn't lock the main thread and you just don't get any lag spike. Honestly, every programmer should always be multi-threading the shit out of everything in their game. The only reason I don't do it personally is because I'm actually afraid of multi-threading. I really have a lot of trouble understanding how it works and it's always generating issues that are the most random bugs you'll ever get on a computer. And it's really hard, really, really, really hard to debug race condition. Curse you, race condition! But in the case of the save file, well, it's fairly straightforward to avoid any threading issues because I only have one thread and it's only writing the file to the disk. And if I make sure I don't try to write multiple times at the same time, then I should be fine. Threading the file right uncovered another interesting issue in Godot. You see, to write a file in Godot, you have to do file new, file open, and pass the flag for writing, then a couple of different file.write, and then you do your file.close. The problem is that as soon as you do the file.open, Godot is going to truncate the file on the disk, which means it's going to become empty. But if something happened while you're writing the file, so for example, if the player quits the game or if you crash or something like that, then your file will remain empty, which means you're going to end up with a corrupted save. And there's nothing worse than crashing in a game except crashing and losing everything. That's just unacceptable. So I couldn't find a good way to make Godot write file in an atomic way, which means guarantee that when I pass it the string, it's going to finish writing it to the disk. So the way I ended up trying to fix the issue is having something I call the flip-flop. Basically, I have backup save and I just alternate between both saves. I save once on save game one and then once on save game two and then I go back to save game one and then go back to save game two. And what that does is that even if save game one gets corrupted, then I can always fall back to save game two. And since I save every turn, then it means that at worst, I'm going to be behind by one or two turns if I reload my game, which is not so bad, I think. If you know of a way to make an atomic save in GDScript, I would really like if you'd leave a comment below this video, because even though my backup system kind of works, I would really like to try to make sure I don't have corrupted save, but I can't find a good way to do it in GDScript, so right now that's what I have. And that's going to be it for this week. Honestly, next week I'm thinking of going into more detail about how I implemented the whole threading system and everything I've learned about yield and tasks and deferred and stuff like that in GDScript. So if this is something that interests you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you know when this new video is going to come out. And until next time, see you guys. Bye!